our soul and all of our mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is just like it, that we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets, wherein in Matthew 22, Jesus condensed the Ten Commandments found in Exodus, the 20th chapter, into two, saying that if we love God and love our neighbors, then we will automatically obey the Ten Commandments as found in Exodus, the 20th chapter, because all that God does is love, because God is love. For God so loved the world, he sent us his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I pray that you will anoint me afresh from the crown of my head to the very soles of my feet as you consecrate me once again into your service by the power of your grace divine. Let my soul continuously look up with a steadfast hope and let my will always be lost in thine. Hold over my being, dear God, absolute sway and fill me, Holy Spirit, so that all shall see Jesus Christ only always living and having his being in me. God, as you anoint my mouth to speak, anoint all of our ears that we can hear from you. Anoint our minds that we may understand exactly what you're saying to us individually and collectively as this body of Christ. And then, God, anoint our hearts that we may receive us what thus saith the Lord, words of encouragement, words of empowerment, and if necessary, words of conviction, God, that we may be granted a closer walk with you. This we ask in the master's name of Jesus. God said to Jeremiah in that first chapter, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb, before your great, 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 great granddad had met your great grandmama in kindergarten or uh, uh, nursery school. God had already made, had in mind that he was going to create you. God knew the gifts that he was going to place inside of you. God knew that you were going to arrive here on earth regardless of the circumstances. He knew that you would come into being because he was going to create you. And with that in mind, everybody God creates has a purpose. Everybody God creates has a gift. We can tap into our gifts and walk in them when we realize what they are. All right, now I'm teaching Introduction to Biblical Studies. And I have taught um, African-American religious experience, uh, the sociology religion, church history, and basically most of the religious courses. And dated that all of our students take Introduction to Biblical Studies. Uh, subsequently, everybody coming through Edward Waters College has to take at least this particular course. They are given a foundation in Christian education. What they choose to do with it is uh, basically on their own, but we have to, as a part of our mission, provide them with some type of biblical foundation. We do engage in various programs to the fraternities and sororities and try to uh, encourage them to reach out, especially during the Christmas holidays this year. During Halloween, we have most of the sororities and fraternities on campus set up stations here on campus to keep our young people off the streets and provide them with a safe haven. Because of the family-oriented structure normally that an HBCU offers that you will not normally find in just basic colleges, I think that there's a genuine need. That small college setting, uh, that homey type environment, a lot of students were need services, that. Even though the setting is small, the Spirit of the Lord just laid on my heart to persevere in faith and don't look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. So the students know I'm here every Sunday, so they'll come. If they desire to come, they know that I'm here. Thank you. You say